Hey people, Sylvia's here. I am now in the sands of Menachatarun. Yeah, that place. Anyway, I'm going to be using a Slayer booster here because I happen to have one. Um, so this is a paid um, area. It's a pretty solid area. I've always enjoyed it. It's got a lot of good EXP. Um, it's slightly less good for your first life. Um, if you're going to true reincarnate your character, it suddenly gets a whole lot better. Um, there is epic level content, which is not relevant at the beginning, but gets relevant. Um, the epic level content isn't super great here, but it's not bad. <clears throat> uh, most of the like uh, items here aren't super great. However, there are two items that are really good um, that can show up here. Um, there's unique named items that can show up in this uh, wilderness area. Uh, I'm going to hit them all up. Uh, well, I'm not going to point them all out. I'm going to point out the one that's most, like, prominent. Um, there's two rare encounters that can each drop either one of the two items that I think are personally really good. So I will showcase those two. The other ones, if there's something you're interested in, you know, kind of figure it out yourself. Sorry. Uh, though I do need to figure out how to get up onto this little thing, because it's an explore point. So anyway, we have explore points. We have rare encounters. 25 explorers, 16 rare encounters. You'll also note that the slayers are divided into their uh, race. Um, that is actually starts getting done in quite a few uh, places. So right now I'm killing gnolls. Um, <clears throat> the hyenas also count as gnolls. The undead, um, the air elementals that will show up for the most part will count as undead. Um, and there's various methods that will also count as undead. They will be all undead. Um, da -da 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 -da. Now I have the map up. If you pull up the map, you'll see that this place is kind of uh, huge, and it is. I don't know if I'm going to split this up into two separate videos. I may, I may not. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, one of those rare items is called uh, the Bloodstone, and it's a trinket item, and there's not that many good trinkets out there. So the fact that the Bloodstone is a good trinket makes it super uh, valuable. Um, if you're tied up for cash, which you probably will be, <laughs> Um, you could farm the bloodstone because one bloodstone will get you an impressive amount of money if you can get one bloodstone. Um, the other item is called the dust cart and uh, is an item that I actually use. I don't use the bloodstone because it's just way too expensive to me for a relatively low gain. The uh, dust cart here is got an empty colorless augment slot, which isn't like hugely important. Improved false life, which is uh, pretty solid. Uh, that doesn't stack with other items that give you um, false life, though. And then Dusk, which is just a 10% chance that enemies will miss you due to concealment. Pretty solid. Um, so yeah, anyway, back to this wilderness area in general. Uh, this wilderness area has a huge amount of quests in it. I think there's like 14 or something like that. Um, several of them are called like walk-up quests, where um, there isn't a quest giver in the traditional sense. You just walk up to the quest, and it triggers the quest on your journal. Hatchlings! Uh, yeah, those counted as, um, the Scaro quest given. There you go. See? Quest bestowed. Um, worth mentioning, there is a lot more gnolls than there are Scaro or undead in this area. The Scaro, besides the few that spawn here, uh, only spawn in one area. And the um, undead also only show up in one area. The gnolls, there's actually two tribes of gnolls. You'll see these guys, the windlashers. There's windlashers, and I believe the other ones are called like firebrands or something like that. So the gnolls actually take up about like twice as much territory as the, um, the other places. Anyway, we are now moving into um, undead territory. However, before I hop into undead territory, I'm going to loop back because there's another explore point. So, so far, I've hit two explore points and none of the potential rare encounters. The uh, first explore point was that desert overlook that I was trying to get up to, right up there. And then the other one was that quest called uh, Purge the Fallen Shrine. Um, the next one is a pain to get to, just because you have to take this uh, path up here, which means, like, possibly doubling back. It will be more gnolls in this area. And I'm not 100% certain I'm pronouncing that word correctly. I mean, it's G-N-O-L-L-S, yeah. Knowles, yeah, so I don't know. I'm 
pretty sure I'm pronouncing it correctly. Several of these guys are mages. The Windlasher Knolls are like your basic commoners. The Aesthetics, if I'm pronouncing that one correctly, are mages. Um, the Harriers are like soldiers. They use uh, bows when they are uh, far away and they switch to an axe. The Hyenas are just their pet dogs. They count. Um, Harrier again. More Hyenas. Wow, lots of Hyenas actually. Do, 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 do. This is actually a great time to have used a Slayer boost. I'm just <laughs> I'm throwing that out there. Um, there's like Evokers. There's... I don't know. We'll see some of them. There are quite a few of um, uh, various types of uh, mages, though, is the important part. What are you? A Harrier? I totally just hit the wrong button. That was awesome. I meant to shoot fire at him, and instead I hit him with a healing punch. Oh man, by the way, so, real quick. Spirit Caller, here's one. Uh, in the chaos of the uh, that quest I was doing before, I didn't really showcase it, but now I have this ability here. Kukando, 25 key, you lock gazes with an enemy, stunning them for a short period of time on a failed will save. DC 10 plus your charisma modifier plus your monk level. Um, anything that affects your stunning blow or stunning fist DCs will affect this. Sightless creatures are immune. And also things that are uh, immune to stuns in the first place are immune. It's actually a pretty solid ability. Um, unlike stunning fist, it's a will save. Stunning fist is a uh, fortitude save. Yeah, Fortitude. <laughs> so it's good for, um, you know, like, it's hard to Stunning Fist, like Giants, for instance. It's really easy to Kukendo uh, Giants. So uh, they, it really helps. Um, monks are already, like, the premier Stunning class. That's an Evoker. That is an Aeromancer, and that is an Evoker also. That is an attack he has called, like, wow, I got held. Wow, I got held. <laughs> wow. I am surprised. Alright, so yeah, this was an explore point right here. Alright, so now we're jumping into what's called the Valley of the False Tombs. Um, there's a storyline to Menchantum, and it was basically like, um, there was a Wizard King, he was great, I don't know, he needed m more power or something like that. He contracted with a demon, uh, the demon, like, led to his kingdom's failure, blah 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 blah. So yeah, we got zombies, and uh, this is like the first spot where you'll start encountering lots of mummies at. There are lots of mummies here. Uh, mummies uh, sort of suck. They hit you with, it's like a disease and a curse, um, and they kind of like go hand in hand with each other. And they both suck. Um, sooner or later, I'll get hit with it, and I can showcase it. Um... Unlike most diseases, though, like, uh, you know, you're fighting a monster that's got disease, right? And it hits you with its disease attack. You make a save against its disease attack. Um, if you fail, you're diseased. If you don't fail, you're not diseased. All right, if you fail, you get the disease, and then you make another save. And if you fail that save, then you take the, like, stat damage. Mummy's curse. Good. I'm diseased. <laughs> okay. Um... Then, after like a minute, you make the save again. If you fail the save again, um, you take the damage again and you still have the disease. If you make the save, you take no damage, and then I think a minute later you make the save again, and if you succeed the second time, it cures your disease. Uh, Mummy's Rot will never go away. You cannot cure it unless you cast magic, so Mummy's Rot, Magical Disease. You've been exposed to Mummy's Rot and will soon succumb to the curse. You will suffer additional constitution and charisma damage until you are cured or you die. If you act quickly, a remove disease will cure this effect. After it sets in to be cured, you must first be treated with a remove curse effect and then by a remove disease. And the Mummy's Curse, you're resistant to healing spells because of Mummy's Curse. You can have the curse removed by using a remove curse potion or getting a... Yeah, 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 or by using a shrine. So the two effects combined are actually pretty rough. They will not go away unless you, like, actively cure them in some way, shape, or form. Um, I think a heal spell will cure it. No, okay. Yeah, and you'll see how it only healed me 192, where it normally heals a lot more than that. But yeah, now I'm cured. 
Um, also, just throwing this out here, and I forgot to mention it, this little platform here is one of the rare encounters. Um, Palamuk the Scorer, Scourer, can spawn there. He is a Sand Mephit, I think he's called. He is one of the ones that can drop either the Dust Cart or the, um, the other thing, the Bloodstone. Also, keep in mind, uh, Mephits are considered elementals. So, any kind of, like, banishing weapons will work on them. Um, furthermore, my light monkishness works really well on them. So, yeah. And, like I said, these methods count towards the uh, Undead Slayers. Here is a quest. It's a walk-up quest. Tomb of the Astrologer. Explore point also. Um... There is a quest in here, I think it's called the Tomb of the Wizard King quest, which grants absurdly good uh, EXP if you know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, it's a little bit of a tough quest. Explore point here. Um, bu 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 bu. Thalmark the Mad can spawn here. Also keep in mind that there's a couple of skeletons here. Thalmark the Mad is not there. You can tell, um, you would see a chest, no chest. Um, the thirsty one can spawn here, and I don't think he did. Yep, he's not there. He would spawn right behind this uh, little wall thing. You would see his chest, like right here. You'd probably see the sparkles. Uh, the thirsty one is the other one that can drop the dusk heart and the uh, bloodstone. So no luck for me. Furthermore, when you go up here, it triggers this little ambush here with uh, one of these wizard dudes. The wizard dudes are actually kind of rough. Also, for some reason. Um, Compared to the melee enemies, the archers seem to have like higher armor class and more HP. So the archers die slower, which is kind of a pain. If you go back here, there's nothing back here. There's no explore points, no rares. Um, just regular dudes. So I'm not going to go all the way back there. I'm going to kill him. You cannot Kukendo undead. They're immune to stun, by the way. Which is, I guess, okay. Whatever. Alright, I don't want to go there. I want to go up this way. So we have two more explorer points here. The Whirling Osman. Whirling Azan, sorry. It's got two N's, not one M. When I glanced at it, I thought the two N's were an M. Whatever, folks. This will be my first encounter in one of these videos with um, air elementals. I believe that's, that's not an air elemental. That's just a uh, terrain feature. Um, air elementals suck. That is an air elemental. They knock you down when they run into you. Yeah, or if you run into them. Which is a pain. They do that slow thing, and they can also bounce you around like that. Yeah, they're super annoying. Also, like, when you're trying to hit, like, various special attacks, like my uh, smite elemental type t attacks and things like that, it's annoying because they constantly are, like, knocking you around and stuff like that and making you miss your attacks. I'm going to try to dismiss this one. Yeah. So, like, for example, I mean, it worked there, but, like, they can real easily uh, blop your your um, thing. And that's the boss. I'm going to turn him into Jade. And that's what, <laughs> that's what an air elemental looks like when you turn it into a Jade. Yeah, and if you run into it while it's Jade, it will still um, try to knock you over. So that's that. I'm going to switch here boost my little, uh, chance at this. No dice. I am, however, going to, um, wait and try a second time. I have found out that you can keep using this until it succeeds. Uh, if it succeeds, there's no reason to keep trying, though. There we go. Ooh. I got a name better. Weathered Targe. Purple slot. Comes with a Sapphire Resistance plus three. Improved Lightning Resistance. Dense Wood. Yeah, it's not really great. Uh, also, the monsters here drop um, the Bronze Antique Tokens, or Antique Bronze Tokens. I don't know which one it was. There is a guy who will trade them in in um, Zawabi's Refuge. He... Uh, allows you to kind of pick what you want to a certain extent, where it's your options are like a good uh, 
a good weapon or like a good suit of armor or a poor weapon or a poor suit of armor or something like that. There could have been a rare encounter, General Tanuk here. He would have been the middle mummy if he was here. He's not. By the way, you can't hurt those mummies until they stand up. I would be super happy if I could kill these things before they... Yeah, good. I was going to say, I'd be super happy if I could kill them before they mummy rot me. Um, and yeah, going over there causes this little ambush to spawn also. Do, do, do. So yeah, the um, <clears throat> the stuff he gives you is like old loot. Um, they like for anybody who's played normal D and D, you'll know that your armor is what is it? Um, like padded leather, studded leather, and then chain shirt for your light armor. I'm going the wrong way. Heavy or medium armor would be. Now I'm not too sure on the medium armor. Like, I'm pretty sure there's four medium armors, but it's like <laughs> scale armor, breastplate, um, chain mail, and I'm pretty sure there's another one. And I don't remember which one that it is though. And then for your heavy armor, it's like splint mail, banded mail, um. Half plate and plate. This is uh, the Tomb of the Wizard King. I don't think he's a walk-up quest, but maybe we'll find out. Yeah, you actually have to pick his quest up from uh, in town. And then we got this guy over here. This uh, tomb here, which is a which is a uh, walk-up quest called the uh, Tomb of the Physician. And we've got another explore point. There we go. Quest uh, bestowed. Um, a while back in DDO, they swapped up their, um, their armor system, so they removed, like, the splint mail and the banded mail, for instance, are just gone from the game. Uh, I think padded armor and studded leather are gone, and I think they took out chain mail and the other one that I can't remember the name of, I think they took out. Um... Then they added, like, upgraded versions of those based off of their kind of level. So it's like, if I had one on me, it would be convenient. Yeah. So this is a Magecraft um, breastplate of Deathblock. So this has a minimum level of 10, no matter what's on it. There's, like, another one for level 6 and so on. Um, they all have, like, roughly their, like, base value. For anybody who's played, like, normal D&D, for instance, you would know that a um, chain shirt, for instance, has a max dex bonus of 4 and an armor value of 4. You would know a breastplate has a max dex bonus of 3 and an armor bonus of 5. The basic breastplate will have that too, but this guy, you'll see his armor bonus is 11 because he's also got a plus 4 enhancement, enchantment bonus enhancement, yeah. Uh, so if you subtract the 4 from the 15 that shows up there under armor bonus, he's got an armor bonus of 11 and his max dex bonus is a 7. Um, so you'll see how things have kind of changed. Anyway, I bring this up because some of the older quests can still grant... Uh, I actually don't want to go up here right now. I want to go this way. Some of the older quests can still grant... Um, those older items and stuff like that. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that guy does. He can still give you, like, banded mail or the older versions of things. Um, and I don't think you see, like, mithril plate mail and things like that either anymore. There used to be those, and I think those are gone. Not exactly, like, a great loss or anything, but, yeah. Uh, this newer system is, like, I think just a little bit more, like, intuitive. <laughs> For people who knew the old system, though, it's probably kind of annoying. Anyway, I bring him up again because he does drop off things like banded mail, which is, like, vastly inferior to what you can get now. Alright, so we're out of Undead Territory, and we are into um, Firebrand Null Territory. The Windlashers are like the natives, and the Firebrands are the ones that are allied with the, the main bad guy here, the uh, Demon Queen Lilat. Her name is, I believe. Oh look, we got a rare. And I stunned the rare. <laughs> So this was an explore point here, and also a rare encounter. That was kind of convenient. I will... 
switch to my little boosting charisma helmet and then go here. Um, furthermore, there used to be a lot more items that would have, like, they were called clicky effects, um, where, like, you would actively, I probably, like, for example, my boots here. Like, they have their basic, you know, jump and whatever, but if you click on them, you'll also get the expeditious retreat effect. Uh, there used to be a lot, oops, that's not what I meant to do. Also, that probably just completely ruined the game for me. Yep. <laughs> wow, that was the most annoying misclick I think I could have possibly have made. Okay. Temporarily fixed it. It's probably going to make me redo all of my bars afterwards. That's cool, though. There we go. Took me three tries, but I got it. Boop, boop. So yeah, he gives you some of the clickies. Some of the clickies can actually be, like, incredibly useful depending on what they are and how bad you need them and things like that. I don't want to go that way. I'm going to go this way. <laughs> and I also want to equip my other boots back. Let's kill these dudes. Firebrand, no. Basic one. And the sergeant, which is a, like, more upgraded fighter. It's interesting, though, that the um, the Firebrand Knolls, who are, like, followers of a demon, have the ones that seem to have, like, a clearly defined military hierarchy. Like, there's lieutenants, there's um, sergeants and stuff like that, whereas demons are um, chaotic enemies. Chaotic evil, but still. Wow, that um, slowing me down thing is lasting forever. That's kind of annoying. So yeah, though, that dude can give you some of the items that still have clickies, and uh, that can actually make them pretty valuable. But um, I don't like having like temporary activated abilities. You'll see on my one bar, um, the middle bar on the top, I've got my slow fall ability and then my um, like activate to do loot stuff, two things. Um, the next two things, one of them's like a purplish dude. It's number four. He, it can be used six times per rest. This one, human versatility save boost. If I hit that, it gives me like a boost to my saves. Now that I'm done killing things, I'll actually just read what it says. Plus four action boost bonus to all saving throws for 20 seconds. And I won't automatically fail in rolls of one. The, not automatically, f all right, that dude's a fiend. I think he's weak to my stuff. It would have been cool if I had hit the right one, so that I could find out for sure. Let's see. Let's hit him with this one. Yeah, okay, so that worked. Can I Jade Strike him? Oh, hey, alright, so he can be dismissed. So yeah, he was actually a fiend. An outsider, in other words. Um. <clears throat> so yeah, like, I don't use that one, and the other one is a Explore Point right here. Submerged robe. Road. Not submerged robe. Uh, the other one is a four action boost to all... Oh, I'm on the same one. 20% action bonus to weapons damage for 20 seconds. Um, that one would be useful. I just... I never use them. I never want to use, like, a temporary activated ability like that. Also, I should totally call my hireling over, because I have very little HP. Can I get the heal? Heal. Thank you. Okay, hold on a second. Do they want me to swim? Was that where I need to... Okay, we'll go up this way. So we are at um, the Burning Mountain. There's, I think, like, two or three quests here. This place is sort of a pain. Alright, I'm actually going to go back to that river, because I'm pretty sure I need to swim across it. This is, uh, slightly annoying. Okay. Yeah, we're just going to go back to that river, I guess. So yeah, I just never use those uh, uh, like temporary active things. I just don't like them. Um, they'll run out. I like I didn't like using my barbarian's rage at first either. But as I got more rages and was able to use it more times a day, and it started lasting longer, it got slightly better. I still don't. I'm not a big fan of it, but it's okay now. Uh, anyway, the other thing I want to point out is that when I hit level 12 on my monk, I got this awesome ability called Abundant Step, which does this. <laughs> and I love that ability. It's actually, I think, it's one. Uh, it's both one of the funnest monk abilities, I think, and also uh, incredibly useful, because you couldn't kind of, it, it wasn't really showcased well there, because I did it across the ground. That's the Burning Mountain, by the way. 
Um, that'll take me, I believe, back to the... Nope, this is where I want to go. Perfect. Uh, I'll showcase it at some point. But it's actually a jump and not just a, like, shoot yourself forward thing. Or, I should say, it shoots you forward even if there's no ground to cover. Kind of like this. Okay, I definitely did not click it at the right time. That was unfortunate. Point is, like, if this bridge wasn't here, I could jump and then abundant stamp to the other area, is what I'm trying to get at. Oop, I didn't even notice this dude here. Uh, also, I mean, kind of obvious, these firebrand dudes are all immune to fire. Which I'm actually going to switch out my fire attack for a cold attack. Is that where I just came from? Yeah, that's where I came from. So to go up the burning mountain, you have to cross this and go here. Going up the burning mountain is sort of a pain. Um, if you see these little things here, that's how you know that you're going the right way, though. Okay. Eh, I thought they might be weak against uh, ice, but they're not. That's interesting to know, though. Boo-boo. I will get pretty solid EXP from this, especially with the... Um... Is somebody shooting at me? Wow, oh, I didn't even notice him. I'm definitely not going to walk back there. I'm definitely getting good EXP, especially with the uh, the Slider Count boost. You've been stunned, Mr. Lieutenant. You were also stunned, although I definitely did that wrong. I tried to Stunning Fist the High Power Melee Warrior. <clears throat> Explore point, not a quest. Collapsed entrance. Uh, yeah, I tried to Stunning Fist the High Powered Melee Warrior and then tried to Will Save the, uh, the Mage. Alright, so now the only explorer point I have to get on this mountain is the actual entrance to the quest in the Burning City. Um, and then there's one on the other side called the Mines, which we will get to also, but in due time. And also, that one's not nearly as hard to get to. <sighs> this is, a uh, yeah, there's like a quest up here. <laughs> this is a uh, part of the annoyance of doing the quest in this area, in that they require kind of a massive walk to get to. Um, especially when you're doing them on, um, when you're doing them on Epic, it's even kind of more annoying. Because on Epic, you're in your 20s. Like, the stuff here is utterly pointless to you in the, like, the wilderness area. Gith who got turned into a statue. It's a pyromancer. I want to see if he's weak against uh, ice. And I hit the wrong button or attack the wrong one. That's good. Whatever. <clears throat> and just a little while ago, I was down there. And that was that archer that was shooting at me. So yeah, like, epic level characters are annoyed by these things because they'll still get in their way. Uh, they're still potentially capable of hurting them. And also, if you get enough enemies um, chasing you, you'll get the, like, dungeon alerts, where if an enemy touches you while you have a high enough dungeon alert, you'll get slowed drastically. So it's just kind of a pain all around. Still, the quests are pretty good. Um, you can't really get those guys. There is a solid raid in this area, um, which is a pretty cool thing, too. Um, the raid's a little bit of a hassle, because you have to do a bunch of flagging for it. Um, and in one of the weirdest things, the there's like a pre-raid that you have to accomplish, but that isn't part of the raid. Explore point. Quest. There you go. And down I go. Uh, so yeah, you have to do the pre-raid. So you have to do three flagging quests, and then the pre-raid. The pre-raid has to be done um, before the raid, but it's not a raid instance, so you can't go in a group of 12. You have to go in a group of six. Which is just a weird issue, and I'm not sure why exactly they did it that way. Okay. Whereas the uh, Windlashers have air elementals and the Undead also had air elementals, these guys have fire elementals. You've seen them before. They're pretty common. I did not mean to dismiss him. I meant to dismiss the, uh, the fire elemental, but whatever. Give myself a little bit of healing while I'm at it. Do-do-do-do-do! 
Blade of the Dark Six. <laughs> Let's see if I can uh, abundant step across this. Yeah, see, that's where abundant step is awesome. <laughs> that's why that ability is awesome. I've got burning blooded. And a bunch of mages on me. That is a uh, fire sphere? I forget what that effect is actually called now that I think about it. It deals damage if I let it touch me. Or it would, but I get to make saves, so. So if we go up here, we're going to run into potentially Lieutenant Aereo and Commander Aerolf. There's two potential rare encounters up in this area. <coughs> Yay, bonus EXP. Alright, I'm going to see if I can't Abundant Step up to them. Oh yeah. See, now the funny thing is, when I was here on my Barbarian, I was not able to get up to them. I couldn't jump up high enough, and he doesn't have Abundant Step. Look, the ball's still chasing me. See it down there? <laughs> still chasing me. So we'll see if any of the uh, the rares are here. Commander Erolf is here. The other one, the lieutenant, is not. Too bad. Conjurer, what are you? What are you? Ritualist. What are you? Sergeant. It's interesting that the sergeants prefer to use, um, and so does he, apparently. They prefer to use, um, you've been stunned, what a loser. <laughs> they, uh, they prefer to use their ranged attacks instead of going to melee, where I'm pretty confident they're better. Awesome. First try. Too bad, Lieutenant, uh, whatever wasn't here. Alright, and we are just gonna drop ourselves down. And there's one more rare encounter in this general vicinity, and uh, one explore point. And to get him, we kind of go up this way. I'm going to recast my Expeditious Retreat on my boots. Get out of here, Mr. Noel. Ugh. Yeah, you can see why uh, this place is, like, quite large, and why I considered uh, splitting it into two. I'm probably going to split it into two, actually. So the remaining video will be the... Uh, I'll make a second video. And the second video will be the... Um, the remaining parts. <laughs> the other half of the Firebrand area, the whole of the Windlasher area, and the... Um, whatever. The Scarrow area. The Drow area, if you will. I did not successfully dismiss you. I successfully turned you into a statue, though. Should probably not just stand in the firewall. Uh, Vorvan the Darkfur can spawn up here, and I think he's normally in this one if he's in it at all. But no dice today. Also, I'm just going to let that guy step there. Alright, so we have one more explore point in this area, which I'm going to go hit, and then I'll end my video here, and then just immediately start the next one. <clears throat> and also, wow, once again, I'm like dying. When did this happen? <laughs> I swear, when did I take that much damage? And why is he just not healing me? Thank you. The Stow quest right there. Alright, and I'll just kill these dudes, and then I'll kill my video here too. Anyway, folks, uh, so like, favorite, comment, subscribe, check me out on Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, and uh, come back for part two in a second.